Welcome to Jailbreak Bus Zone. We've got a lot of great stories for you today, and as always, let's go ahead and get started. Our first story is an update. Now, two weeks ago, we talked about how Apple announced their keynote event for March 21st. So what did we see at the Apple event? Well, they opened the event with Tim Cook coming out on stage and saying, We built the iPhone for you, our customers. We know it's a deeply personal device. The iPhone is an extension of ourselves. A month ago, we asked Americans to join in a conversation. We need to decide as a nation how much power the government should have over our data and our privacy. We did not expect to be at odds with our own government, but we believe we have a responsibility to protect your data and privacy. We owe it to our customers and we owe it to our country. This was a big move for the Apple versus FBI situation as the court trial was actually that next day, March 22nd, but the FBI had later figured out that there are other ways to get into the phone other than, you know, having Apple actually needing to get in there and needing to actually help them with it. So they actually just dropped the case altogether. Another thing is, for one, they really wanted to push the whole environmentally friendly thing. Normally they do this at every event, but since the event was a little light on content, they wanted to drive home the idea of iPhones being reused by this machine called Liam. Liam would reconstruct old iPhones and use the old parts for other Apple products. They even made a pretty long video which they showed off at the event demoing how Liam actually worked. So what else did they show off? Well, first up was new woven nylon bands for the Apple Watch. They come in a bunch of new colors and they actually do look pretty cool. The new bands cost $49.99. After being previously leaked, a black Milanese loop band was announced with the price being set at $1.99. They also decided to drop the price of the entry-level Apple Watch from $349 to $299, which was a $50 difference. Next up was tvOS 9.2, which came out after the event. Finally, with all the suspense built up, they announced their answer to a brand new 4-inch iPhone in 2016, the iPhone SE. Wow. Rumors were right again for once. That's interesting. Anyway, the 4-inch iPhone got all the specs and hardware of the iPhone 6S, like we are hearing, minus the 3D touch, and live photos were still able to be accomplished on the SE, but you would have to long press on the screen and not 3D touch, as 3D touch was not actually included inside of the SE. The camera was also bumped up to the range of the iPhone 6S, with it being a 12 megapixel camera. So the camera rumors were right. Basically every single rumor that we heard prior was right. There are two different storage configurations. A 16 gigabyte version? Yeah. Still in 2016 guys, 16 gigabytes for 2016, it's pretty funny. But still, anyway, that's regardless of the point. 16 gigabytes in 2016, really 16 gigabytes is so small. I, I, I don't know. I. I guess it makes me feel better that this is basically a build from 2013, but with 2016 hardware inside of it. There's also a 64 gigabyte option as well, which is, you know, a lot better. The storage actually is larger than 16 gigabytes, and 16 gigabytes is super, super small. But anyway, regardless of storage, each option for the 16 gigabyte, it is $399, and for the 64 gigabyte, it is $499, so it's a $100 difference. Also, they added the rose gold color option as well. Next up was iOS, the update we have all been waiting for, iOS 9.3. Apple announced that iOS 9.3 would be available as soon as the event was finished. Next up, this story happened when I was on vacation. A team by the name of the Proggy Jailbreak team claimed they had successfully jailbroken the Apple Watch. What sucked was that some of the screenshots they tweeted out actually looked like they were kind of somewhat believable. That is until they tweeted out a download link with instructions on how to install it, and people tried to install it and their phones were crashing. Then they took to Twitter to say, Proggy V1.1 iOS, which supports iOS 9.2 slash 9.2.1 slash 9.3 for the Apple Watch will release soon. Version 1.0 does not work with the iPhone 6, 5S slash iPad A2, which is iPad Air 2. After we saw the iPad Air 2 listed, we obviously realized something was up because the only actual devices that have the Apple Watch app are iPhones. So we knew obviously if an iPad or an iPod or something to that extent was listed as being compatible with this, that it was fake. Our next story, well, it goes back a bit. Recently, we've been in a jailbreak drought. 
The last usable iOS-based jailbreak that was released, apart from the one that was released a few weeks ago for 9.1, was released October 14th, 2015. So it's been a long, long time since we had a jailbreak that was out that a lot more people than just like 10% of the community could use. About a month back, a Twitter user under the name ENNTW claimed he had a working jailbreak. He seemed legitimate because a lot of big names in the community, including I Hate Snow, Luca Tedesco, and Cool Star, were all following him. Cool Star vouched for it, and so did a bunch of other guys as well. We even went as far as to interview him on our podcast, Jailbreak Weekly. We had him on live, and over 600 people showed up on stream, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Fast forward to a couple of days ago when another podcast had him on for a second time, and they basically did the exact same thing we did, except they had Ethan Arbuckle, his friend, on to vouch for him that the jailbreak was actually real. They did the interview, but the whole time, all ENTW was doing was shit-talking Sarek. He decided that because he was running low on time to scrap the jailbreak for iOS 9.2 through 9.2.1 and focus on the one for 9.3 and 9.3.1. Later on in the podcast, he announced that he had three options. Option one would be that he would get Sark to somehow cooperate with him and update Cydia. Therefore, he would be able to actually, you know, release a fully functioning jailbreak. Option two would be that he would actually release a tool that you would be able to install that would get you root slash SSH access. Basically, what that means is you'd be able to browse the entire file system of the device, but you wouldn't have Cydia installed by default. Then the last option would be to just straight up sell the jailbreak to China and let them deal with the community, basically taking off the NTW's name from the jailbreak and making him no longer a part of it. He said that people can vote on it and he would let everyone know his decision the following day. Now, a bunch of speculation before the announcement and even after the announcement was that he had been fake from the very beginning and he had come up with this idea of waiting until Taiji or Pangu was close to releasing a new jailbreak and he would just say that he sold his exploits to China when a new jailbreak would be released and it would be all over for him. There would be no more talking about it. It would be done. He'd just be, you know, he, he would be technically be credited for it, but, you know, nobody would really care because they'd have a brand new jailbreak. Nobody would focus on that. Well, even though the vast majority of people voted for him to release an SSH slash root access tool, he backed out and went with the last option claiming he had sold it to China. Now that all this is over, I am kind of happy in some ways he picked this over, you know, all the other options because now he's out of the headlines. People kept asking me over and over, is Ian? NTW real? Does he have a real jailbreak? Is he going to really release it? And I genuinely didn't even know the answer. And even now I don't know the answer. The only way to know for sure is to wait until Taiji comes out with a new jailbreak. If he wasn't faking and he was telling the truth, they will credit him for his exploit. If he was lying the whole time, then they will not credit him. So unfortunately, we are back to waiting for either Taiji or Pangu to release a new jailbreak. There is no telling of how much longer we will have to wait, but hopefully the release of the iPhone SE and iOS 9.3.1 speeds things up. I wanted to cover more fakes, but this was important because this was big news, and I figured you guys would want me to talk about it. Also, as an additional story, the Jailbreak Busters Twitter account reached 1,000 followers on Thursday. That's crazy! I started this account with the intention of making a difference in the community. Four months ago, I did the math right, it's crazy to think that it's only been four months and in the past four months we've gotten a thousand followers on Twitter because I've had my personal Twitter up for I think three years now and I've, I just reached 500. So I, I got, I've gotten a half of that in only three years which is just ridiculous or in three years time whereas it was only four months time that I hit a thousand which is just ridiculous. It's crazy to think about, but I want to thank all of you guys. It's insane. It's crazy. I am so excited. I'm so happy, um, and I'm so glad that we hit this milestone together. Here is to another milestone. Hopefully, we can reach more, you know, another big amount of followers on Twitter, and hopefully, here is to an 1,000 subscriber milestone on this channel. Let's do it, guys. Anyway, that does it for today's news. Please share this video around with your friends, your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad. Anyway, guys, you get it. Please share this video around with everyone and anyone you can. 
Also, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to us as well. If you want to tip us off on any other fake slash other jailbreak news, make sure to follow us on Twitter at jailbreakbuster and tweet at us letting us know about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, this is David, signing out. Peace!